Now that we've created a hole in the ground, the next step is to complete it to create a well. The completion process involves stabilizing the hole so it doesn't collapse and preventing particles from entering the well and coming out with the water that we would want to recover. So the, there are several ways of doing this and what I'm going to show you here is the common technique used for shallow wells and piezometers and it'll involve a casing and a well screen. So the casing is much like a pipe uh, solid tube and the well screen is a uh, has some slots in it uh, some holes that will let the water enter so we see that up there at the ground surface and the first step then is to put this into the ground and let's see like so so we put that in the hole the screen you can see there is at the bottom that's shown with those slots the next step is to add sand into the annular space between the casing and the uh, outside of the hole so it fills that up and then uh, what's going to be done then is the particles or the, some mobile material that's in the formation uh, will be pr will be filtered out uh, by this uh, sand pack here so this is a, 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 a granular material that provides a filtration capacity and then the well screen what it's going to do is allow the water to enter but it filters out the uh, sand that we've added okay so the filtration process is really a two-step process the uh, the porous media that we add the sand that we add uh, filters out the formation and the well screen filters out the the filter pack. Okay, so then the next step is going to be to seal up the annulus on top of the sand. And so a material called bentonite is added. Bentonite is uh, it contains clay that swells and forms a seal that prevents fluids from uh, traveling along the annulus of the well. Uh, the next step then is to add grout to the annulus that will seal up the annular space uh, and prevent fluids from uh, flowing down it. Um, fluids at the ground surface are of particular concern. So there are the main components, the sand filter pack, the bentonite seal, and the grout seal. And there's the purpose of the sand filter uh, and the well screen. And the grout seal is going to prevent the f influx of fluids, particularly fluids coming in from the ground surface. So here are some different well screens. This one over here on the left side is the most common. This is a PVC slotted screen. You can see the slots in it right here. These are cuts about half a millimeter wide um, that are cut into the wall of this PVC pipe and that lets the water in but it filters out the sand so clearly we want to use a sand filter pack that has, that has diameters that are bigger than the slots in the screen we also see that there are some threads up here uh, those are th the threads are for screwing together pieces of casing or screen you might know that that typically PVC pipe is glued together but this glue uses a solvent to bond the PVC and you wouldn't want to put this solvent in a well so instead the um, the casing and screen is screwed together uh, with this threaded uh, arrangement and you can see also that it's in a plastic tube uh, plastic sleeve and that's to keep it clean um, while it's being transported so this is the most common kind of screen. It's the least expensive. It works just fine for um, piezometers. But if you want to have a very high flow of water through uh, the, into the well, then these slots may restrict the flow. And so what's shown here on the right side is a wire wrap screen. And this has a, a set of ribs right here, and then this triangular shaped wire that's wrapped around to, uh, to, to form the support on the screen. When you make a screen like this, you have a much higher surface area 
than you do with a slotted screen like that. So if you need to let water in and uh, have it flow with minimal head loss, then a wire wrap screen like this is going to be a much better performer than the PVC screen. These are made out of stainless steel uh, and they're welded at these contact points right here. Uh, and so it's quite expensive to make these screens. Um, it, as a result, they're generally used in wells that are being um, going to put in production and are uh, going to be fairly expensive uh, wells. Okay, so we've got the the screen that's holding back the filter pack and the filter pack holds back the formation. Well, in order to size the filter pack under ideal conditions, what you would do is take samples of the formation, put it through a sieve, and come up with a grain size distribution of the material in the formation. And then based on that, you would size the filter pack. The filter pack has to be finer than the formation um, and coarser than the screen. So if you're designing a well that will be put into production and, and generate high flows of water, then this is all very important. And there's a great deal of details that I would recommend you look into about how the sizing of the filter pack and the slots in the screen are done. Um, for, the, for the most part, though, for routine wells, what's done is used just fairly standard size slots that are about half a millimeter and a, a coarse grain well sorted sand as a filter pack. Another variation on this is to uh, have the screen and the filter pack uh, put together here uh, and used in the well, uh, put into the well at the same time. This is called a pre-packed screen. So this shows the process of completing the well in a little more detail. In this diagram, the screen and the casing has been put in the well and the sand is added to the annular space. And what this shows is a tremie pipe right there. That's well, here it's spelled out, tremie. And the tremie pipe is used to ensure that the sand gets all the way down to the screen. What can happen during the completion process is that if you just uh, if you just dump the sand in, then it may end up going to the bottom, but it may actually get hung up on the way down and form a, a blockage, form a bridge. And if that's the case, then the sand doesn't in fact get to the bottom. It's hung up here, uh, well above the bottom, and that's that's a problem because the well then ends up being. Uh, completed in a way that's different than what you expect and the filtering properties of the sand aren't going to be working right and the sealing properties of the bentonite and the grout also won't be working right and so what's done then is during the completion process a that's meant let me erase this stuff uh, during the completion process as the completion is being done um, you lower down a, a, often a tape with a weight and verify that the sand is at this depth. And then if you add another bag of sand, it'll it should increase in, in the height uh, by a certain amount. And if you then verify that, then you can ensure that it's getting down to the bottom. So this bridging process can be quite a, quite a problematic thing. And often it's the responsibility of the hydrogeologist to verify that the completion process is done correctly. Here's a view of the well being completed. You can see the sand pack down there. And here's uh, some photographs of some problems during the completion process where there's a void between the casing and the uh, annular seal. Um, and then here is a, a bridge that's formed. So there was a, the, the, as the, the bentonite is put in, for example, it too can bridge. And in this case, uh, in this case, what's being shown is that the, the sand is in here okay, but the, bri the, the bentonite formed a bridge right here, and so there's a void. And this is, this is a problem. The, the bentonite is put in there to seal the annular space, and if it doesn't get down all the way to the uh, gravel pack, the filter pack, then the seal is not done properly. So here's a well that's being installed 
with a wire wrap screen right there. So this will be a high flow production well. And then here's uh, the process of installing the gravel pack. And this is done by um, the sand is being put in here into this funnel. And this is the tremie pipe right there. And it's being washed down into the, into the formation or into the annular space in the well like that. OK, so that's one style of completion. Wells around here in alluvium are done that way. The wells in the bottoms are, are done that way. Wells in saprolite are completed that way. But the wells in rock are done, in a, done differently. A completion in rock is uh, the wells are typically done like this. The well is drilled with, say, a 10-inch a, a diameter bit. And then a casing is put in, the 6-inch casing. This space is sealed. And then a 6-inch bit is put in with a, an air hammer. And it's drilled down to depth. And so this is, this is saprolite up here. And this is rock. So the casing goes through the saprolite. Saprolite is fairly weak material. And so a hole drilled through saprolite would not stay open. Uh, the casing is put through the saprolite down to the rock. And then the rock itself is just left open. So here's, say, a fracture in the rock. And that's what I show here in this diagram. Uh, this is the, the gray is the annular space with the seal. And then the, the casing is right here. And so as a result of completing wells this way, uh, you can actually see the rock. If you complete the wells using the, the scheme that I showed you previously, then all you can see uh, from the inside of the well is the, the casing or the screen. So it's not too interesting. But here you can see the rock and you can see the fractures. And that allows you to get an idea about what is in the subsurface. And so um, this is a picture looking down. This is uh, familiar to some of you. And it will be familiar to everybody. What I also wanted to show you is a project that we did a few years ago where we took the pictures from a borehole camera like what you're using uh, and stitched them together. And so this is, uh, I think, a couple hundred pictures that are stitched together. And in this case, the pictures were taken looking sideways at the borehole wall. So there's one picture right there. And they're put together in this big mosaic. And what you end up with then is the image of the inside of the borehole wall that is unwrapped. And you get some distinctive patterns. This thing right here, that's a, a fracture. That's a dipping fracture. And this is the, uh, the, the high point, And this is the low point. So if we also had a compass on this, and that certainly is possible to do, if we knew what the orientation of that point was, this point would be 180 degrees from that direction. And uh, these guys would, the directions of these, this point and this point would give us the dip direction. Well, I guess, I guess the direction right here uh, of that point would be the dip direction of this fracture. And we can see that it's dipping. We could, if we knew the diameter of the borehole and we knew this difference here, then if we look at it in cross-section, this is the high point of the fracture, and this is the low point. So this point would be here. Uh, this point would be right here. And uh, by getting the, this difference in uh, distance and the borehole, we could, the borehole diameter, we could get that angle. We'd get the dip. So if we look up here at the, the other, uh, we look above this fracture, then we can see, if we look closely, we can see that all up in here, uh, we have kind of a sinusoidal pattern to the, to the fully, or to the, to the features here. You can see how they go like that. This is the intact rock. It's nice. Uh, and it, the, this is the foliation. Uh, the dipping foliation that we're seeing here, like that. Um, and there's some other, looks like maybe some pegmatite material up here. 
Okay, so this is giving us a, a good bit more information than what we could have gotten if this well had been cased uh, with, a, with a casing and a screen. If we take image, an image like this and wrap it around a cylinder, then we would get something that would look like a core. This is done. Uh, there are systems that make images like this one uh, without having to stitch together a mosaic. Uh, it uses a rotating camera, and it's a, a, a televiewer, it's called. And these televiewer systems are able to generate images that look like this. So uh, it's, it's what a cylindrical core would look like if it was taken from this well.